Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes, and we're going to continue again, of course, with the poisoning and overdose portion of the EMS Quick Study uh, Tips and Help. This is Episode 9, and we're talking about assessment here. Um, this is Part 2, so we're going to be going over very specific parts of poisoning and overdose, specific types of poisonings and overdoses. So as always, I always try to suggest why is this important, right? And of course, I stress exam prep because when you know this stuff and you're familiar with these key elements here, you're going to succeed and do much, much better on your exams. And of course, again, this is going to help with your documentation, with your patient assessments, with your interaction with other healthcare professionals, and it's going to help you be an overall better uh, provider. Okay. And my hope is, of course, is that if you don't recognize what I'm talking about, these key elements of this, uh, I, I want you to go ahead and crack open that textbook. Use a resource online or off that will help you master and grasp this content so that you go into that exam, you are ready, and you're not guessing what the answer is. Okay. So let's get into it, guys. Um, Today, the title to talk about is cholinergics and anticholinergics. So we talk about cholinergics. These are the things that um, stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. They block the breakdown of acetylcholine. And normally, you're going to find these in pesticides. Okay, organophosphates are the most popular. And nerve gas. I'm sure you've heard of things like sarin gas, right, or somin gas. All right, that's where we're normally going to find this type of poison. And signs and symptoms, I'm sure you've heard sludgeon, sludge or sludgeon, depending upon where you are, what you might what you might see. And that's that salivation, that lacrimation, uh, you know, tearing of the eyes, the drooling, uh, the urination that you're losing your GI function. Um, GI cramping and emesis. Okay, bradycardia, very common. Wheezing, vision issues like meiosis, coma, and even seizures. Now, what are some of the, the, the management things we can do? Well, for this type of thing, guys, of course, we always stress our safety first, right? You don't want to be exposed to this type of thing yourself, right? And hazmat. These are the ones that get called in for this type of stuff. Your hazmat teams will get called in for this. All right, you're going to be the one that's going to stage at a safe distance. Now, of course, a lot of ambulances, a lot of agencies now carry the atropine kits, the 2PAM. Right, the, the the sort of the antidotes for this type of stuff, and also diazepam or maybe even activated charcoal, if it's ingested orally, and of course that's gonna, this is going to depend upon your local guidelines and your local protocols, but most will definitely stress, of course, your safety, and to activate a hazmat team. And of course, the dosages of atropine and two pam is going to be, you know, related to uh, where you work, how much or how little, or what types of patients you give this to. All right, now anticholinergics, they do the reverse, right? They're going to block the parasympathetic nervous system. They're also called vasolytic agents. Things like atropine, apotropium, antihistamines, antispasmodics. Tricyclic antidepressants. All right, these are all things that will block the parasympathetic nervous system when you're overdosed on this. Not your regular dosages, right? Regular dose of atropine, we do that in the field. Apotropium, we do that in the field. Antihist, we do that in the field. We're talking about overdoses of these poisons. Now, some of the symptoms you're going to see hot. Red and dry. Your patient's going to be hot. They'll be very, very flushed. They'll be dry. Sometimes they call them mad. Those are the severe symptoms where you get that psychosis. All right. They'll be tachycardic, have an elevated heart rate, elevated respiratory rate, tachypnic, 
And like I said, you have that temporary psychosis going on. And that's severe. So you got a patient that's very hot, red, and dry. Start thinking about that they might be overdosed on, on, on an anticholinergic. What are some of the, signs, the, the, the treatment we can do for this? Basically, we're going to manage their airway, their breathing, their circulation. That's the main thing we're going to do for these patients. Counter drugs really, really give a lot of times they can actually be more dangerous than the anticholinergics themselves. Okay. Of course, poison control might be an option depending upon what the patient took, and they might be able to direct you further depending upon what is available to you in your region at your agency and what your guidelines are what your protocols are for for that okay treat the symptoms guys right treat your airway treat that breathing treat the station activated charcoal it, it might help but again it depends upon what it is that they ingested and how long ago it was like we mentioned in the last video finding out how much they took, how long ago they took it, which way they took it, right? So find that information out. You can call Poison Control and, and ask them what it is that they might suggest, you know, of course, based upon what you have and what's available to you. Okay, but with everything, you want to follow your own protocols and you want to manage the ABCs and you want to manage your and your partner's safety Okay, which of course is paramount. Okay. All right. That's it for this episode. Next time, I'm going to talk about narcotics and opiates. Sort of the same thing, what they are and what they do, the signs and symptoms, and the management of that type of poisoning or overdose. So I hope you'll join me for that, guys. Of course, be sure to hook up with me on any of these uh, social media mediums here instagram t facebook twitter or, or even snapchat i am ems safe there friend me on snapchat uh any questions comments concerns please send them to me guys my email is contact at emsofficehours.com be sure to visit emsofficehours.com other videos in this series and also monday minutes and a lot of other great content there including the podcast all right guys that's it for me uh, again, I love seeing you on here. I want to hear what you want to see on these Monday Minutes. Send them over to me via that email, contact at emsofficehours.com. All right, until next time, as always, I'm Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.